going to do is, while we're waiting on folks, as I have a little bit of tape, and I have some paper craft. So we'll listen to some music while I paper craft, and a few people will come online. I do have my Commodore 64 mug right here with a little bit, I don't know if you can see it, a little bit of eggnog in there. That's gonna be tasty. This is going to be a quick and dirty cutting. I am not going to spend much time because I do have a second one over here that I will spend some time with later uh, doing just a little bit of uh, paper crafting uh, with the new Mega 65 box that they released last night on the files host. So uh, while we wait on a few people to get here, then I do have the, uh, the Mega 65 all fired up here for us. I would be using the X-Acto knife for the other one, but I just kind of want to see what this is going to look like. Uh, but uh, we're, we're going to fire up some uh, Mega 65 games here in a bit, but I really need to work through this cut here. Oh, this yeah, I already went in a little bit too deep. I think I saw somebody online who had already cut theirs, and you really want to do this with uh, some better cardboard and uh, probably some cardboard that you can actually get, unlike what happened with us with the Mega 65, where the Mega 65 team could not get cardboard to ship these boxes and uh, have these printed. Uh, th that was not available. The worldwide logistics problem got to our favorite Mega 65 project, unfortunately. So we have uh, Jay Crudy. How did you get a copy of the box artwork? Great, great, uh, great question. So the uh, box artwork is available at the Files host. Hang on, let me, th I think I can help you with that. And if you uh, go to files.mega65.org, you'll see right here, the Mega 65 mini packaging is available. You can download it, uh, you'll get the artwork, and uh, you too can join in a little Christmas paper craft with me if you want to do that. So, great question, Jay. Thanks for asking that. Hey, Jamie's Hack Shack, good to see you. By the way, Jamie's Hack Shack, I got, I got a little shout out for you. Can, can you find it? This is a little something for you. You have to find it. Look, look, it's like, where's Waldo? Uh, but it's uh, it's great to have you join us. Uh, uh, for those of you who may not know, Jamie is a neighbor who lives down the street. I'm glad you found that. Yeah, feel free to, to grab that. Let me go back in. And again, we're going to play some games here in just a minute. Let me see if I can cut just a little bit more on this uh, box. And again, I'm just doing a quick cut. Just kind of want to see what this is going to look like. I thought this would be a fun way for us to kind of get started. Plus, it's a neat little holiday surprise, as Jay learned. Uh, because now you know where to go and get your own Mega 65 box that you can print and have it under your Christmas tree so that uh, you feel like you got at least something from the Mega 65 team on Christmas. And I really appreciate that they kind of put the box artwork. I also have something else to show you that they shared that you're going to love. Little teaser. I have the onboarding uh floppy disk it's going to be coming with the mega 65 that i'm going to be showing you so that's going to be the first thing we're going to show once i get do done with a little paper crafting ah jamie jamie caught it in the uh, top left view that's it yep it's right right you can't see but it's it's over here uh jamie and his family was kind enough uh to leave us a nice holiday package on our door when we got back from some last minute downtown breakfast and a little bit of shopping uh let's see i think i'm going to need to cut this one all the way down to here we're almost there. I tried to get started on this early so I'd be a little bit closer to being done by the time folks showed up. Don't worry, we're going to get to the games here soon. Hang in there. Uh, have, again, have some, have some more eggnog in your, uh, your favorite uh, Christmas mug, which that's mine. This was, believe it or not, this was a gift from my mother this Christmas. This is turning out to be a really good Christmas. I got uh, this guy right here from the neighbors. I got this from my mother who remembered that I like Commodore computers and she found this and got that to me. And of course inside I have a little nog for us. Let me know if you're drinking nog out there. Full nog or whatever nog. I would love for you to share any holiday memories maybe you have from your Commodore computer Christmas day. Uh, I think I've told a lot of people before my very first computer was a Commodore VIC-20. That was not a Christmas gift though. That came from mowing lawns and uh, saving and ordering from Sears store. But a lot of accessories came in around Christmas time. Some games, a lot of magazines. Uh, I would often get magazines stuck in my stocking, which was really great because that was a whole day's worth of reading. Usually, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it was Compute Magazine, Run Magazine were the ones that usually ended up uh, in my stocking. And uh, Jamie says, cool mug. It is a cool mug. How about that? 
my mother did that. I think I have everything cut now. So let me get rid of Jamie's comment there. Uh, if I do a little folding now and we'll see how it goes. Let's see what we get here. Now I didn't have any double sided tape and I did not have a uh, glue stick. I'm getting there, let's fold. Is that a cut off or a cut uh, in? I think it's gonna be a cut over and fold over. So we're gonna keep that. And then this is gonna fold under like this. And again, I have a kind of a cool surprise for you. I have the onboarding floppy disk that we're all going to get when our Mega 65 arrives, at least uh, in, a, in a beta form. I would say it's probably pretty close because they were anticipating that uh, we would be shipping those or those would have shipped. So I'm hopeful that what we see is pretty cool. And I have not played a lot with it. I did uh, load it on my SD card just to make sure everything was working, but I haven't played a lot with what's on there. So we're going to kind of experience that together. All right, I think I have it here. So I think I fold these in right here. This is pretty good. Uh, I'm kind of digging this. Uh, so let's see it here. Hey, uh, who, oh, oh, Miss, Miss Love. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Here's Miss Love. Miss Love is one of my uh, my biggest fans, supports the channel, great supporter of the channel, always glad to join us. I know it's late where you are, Miss Love, and uh, it's probably right. You're probably, uh, are you putting toys together for family members? I'd love to know what you're up to right now because it is Christmas. It's hard Christmas Eve where you are. Hey, this is coming right along. Check this out. Uh, this is kind of fun. We're almost done. Hopefully you're not bored by my little paper craft project. Again, it was just a way to get people in here, give them some time to get in here before we start taking a look at some of the games. And uh, this is coming along nicely. Not bad for a, a quick uh, cut job. That doesn't sound good, a quick cut job. I don't know. That, that sounds uh, nefarious, doesn't it? Sounds like cut job sounds like something the Grinch would do. Oh, by the way, I, I do. I did. Uh, I did. I did go all out for you all. So. There you go. Because uh, of you, oh, my shift ends at 8 p.m. Had to leave work early. You left work early for this? <laughs> Bless your heart. Here, here's uh, Miss Lop saying uh, his shift ends at 8. So you actually had to work on Christmas Eve? That's not fun either. So hopefully this will add a little bit of holiday spirit. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, 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 the hat here is just for all. Miss Lop, this is for you. So there you go. And uh, I think I'm almost there. Okay, so if we fold this. Oh, check this out. This has even got the... Okay, I've got to be careful to get this right. Let's see. Here we go. Here's another... Here's, our, here's one of our good first stories here. I don't know if I can move that up. Um, Jay, I'm sorry. It's going to cut your comment off a little bit. If it says, first computer was a C64 bread bin with a 1541 and RCA TV. Wow, I love that. Uh, back in the day, uh, only software I had was uh, had was that which I could type in for magazines in BASIC. The start of a lifelong interest in computers and tech. Exactly the same experience for me, except mine was a VIC-20 bread bin. And typing in those programs proved to be the way that I learned as well. I couldn't afford software. Uh, so luckily, I think it was about, um, I don't know, let's see. Probably a month or two later, I got a data set. Uh, so I could save on cassette, but uh, you know that was that was better than nothing for sure. Uh, but it was that was a painful process. I remember. Okay, this last fold is going to be difficult, and I'm kind of butchering it. So let me focus here. I should have scored it, but let me see if I can fix this here real quick. I know you didn't tune in for paper crafting, and you're here for the games and the Mega 65. But just bear with me, just a little bit longer. All right, there we go. Got it. All right, so here we go. Got it back under here for you. And if we, if I don't mess it up, I fold this back under right here and this one right here. And uh, we should be able to take those and fold that right into there and this one into there. Check it out. We may not have received our Mega 65s under our tree, but we definitely received our, a mini Mi Mega 65 box. How cool is that? Hey, Miss Law, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Merry Christmas to you. Thanks for the uh, the super chat. That is so nice of you. You're always so kind. Uh, thanks again for that. And Merry Christmas to you, Miss Law. Uh, I'm sorry you had to work tonight. So if I could ship this little box to you, I would. But you can print your own, by the way. Don't forget that. Let's get mega. Mark is ready for me to move on away from this. And let's get to the mega. So we are going to do that. So Mark... I'm glad to have you with us, and as I said, we've got uh, onboarding, the onboarding 
D, uh, SD card from the Mega Team. So here we go. I'm going to attempt to get all this stuff out of my way and let's get to it. So I'm going to switch on over to this screen right here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to reset the Mega first of all. And this is what's going to appear when you buy, when your Mega arrives. You're going to have this nice onboarding screen right here. I am in PAL mode to make sure that everything is uh, compatible. Let me go ahead and get rid of my little capture card banner there. And then we got that. And then what you can do is you can press any key, of course, and then you have a nice menu of options. Now, one of the things the Mega Development Team told me was spend some time on the onboarding, which we will do, but then within this on board there's a side a and there's a side b the side b has a bunch of commodore 64 games that are enhanced for the mega 65 so we're going to spend a little time in those too so i promise games so what we're going to do is uh, look at some games i am using the hyperkin joystick you all know i, I love this little thing it's a callback to the uh, the atari 2600 i have links to this everywhere on the website uh, i've noticed a lot of people have been buying these um, because I do have um, Amazon affiliates on this, so I'm kind of trying to see how many, about 15 people have bought this at, after my recommendation, so hopefully people are enjoying it. But uh, we're gonna start with Blaster, which is one of my favorites. And I have my headphones here so I can hear the sound. So let's see if this works. Now, the other thing I love about this is it, set, it lets us know who the developer is and if there's any information we need to, to get that game running uh, it'll tell us that there are a couple of games that have codes and things like that so let's go ahead and hit return pardon me i need some more okay can you hear that all right this is running in c65 mode no oh yes i'm sorry jay so the question from jay is this is running yes this is in c this is in mega 65 mode or c65 mode and so uh, this game actually works i don't know if you saw my last video i used the original rom from the original uh development version of the c65 just to see if this would run and it did it was really kind of cool and i did that on the nexus on the dev kit and in XEMU, and you could use the original rom and still play this game that's how compatible they are so i am going to put some uh earphones on how do you do this how does santa wear, wear earphones there we go chat and sound is good thank you appreciate it and let's give it a shot now this says joystick 2 now normally you would have to unplug and change but check this out i'm going to go into my freezer i am going to swap my joystick there go back to resume and hit my button and it works so i love that and so this is blaster the only thing about blaster I don't hear the weapons. You hear the weapons? It's great. It's it's got a, kind of a Galaga feel, but there's no weapon sounds. I, I that would be my one suggestion to the developer. Let's let's get a blasting sound. We need a blasting sound down there, right? And it's pretty easy to play at the beginning. Again, it's got that Galaga feel. Once you figure out the patterns, you can really get going. And if you've watched any of my live streams while I play games, I tend to hold my mouth open. Uh, I'll try not to do that. Santa wouldn't do that. So this is just a great ah, game over. So there are a couple of other things that need to work on too. Um, it needs to work on, you don't really know when you're dead. It doesn't have a, like a bomb sound when you die or those types of things. So that is Blaster. That's a really great game. I enjoy that. Here's the nice thing uh, that we can do. I can simply reset the Mega 65. And it will go back into that menu pretty quickly. You can see how quickly that goes and do that. So that's one way that you can go back in there. We're going to be using the freezer a little bit later. I'm going to show you how to freeze the Mega 65 at certain states. As a matter of fact, I'll do that for the uh, 64, the Commodore 64 mode. So we'll be coming back to that. So let's go to another game. Character Wars is an interesting game in that it's very similar to what we just played. And you see it was an entry for challenge, basic challenge. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and enter that. And this one is written in basic, uh, which is really kind of cool. So let's try this one. Ah, let's get rid of this hat for now. And let's go in and fire to start. So again, what we're doing is using character to blast. 
I'll go ahead and get rid of this. I'm getting a little echo on my audio, uh, and I knew that was going to be an issue. I've got to work through that. But you can see it's another uh, Galaga, Galaxian type game, and when the letters start flying on their own, that's when it starts to get a little bit crazy. So this is just a simple game uh, that was uh, part of a challenge to, to try and create a game in basic, and oh, almost. It's actually kind of fun, though. It's uh, If I can get it right there, there we go. Get rid of that one. Get rid of the W and get it now. So that is another game that I think is kind of fun. Let's see. Are these games made using basics? So some of them are. Most of them are not. Some of the ones I'm showing. Mark, they, uh, is there a way to create games in more modern language? Yes, there are. As a matter of fact, there's a couple of development packages and ways that you can do that. Uh, the onboarding CD, or I keep wanting to call it a CD. I don't know why. The onboarding SD actually comes with a development environment called Eleven that you can use uh, a modern programming language with modern uh, programming um, skills and uh, techniques. Let me see if, uh, just uh, I think I can pull it up for you here real quick. Hold on just a second. Let me see if I can find that for you. Come down to 11 right here. Yeah, let me reset and try this now. This is the 11 development environment. And you can see here as you come through, it'll tell you uh, how to use the package, but you can, and let's see if they've uh, got any of the software on here. If I load, and if I, if I remember, if I do this, uh, let's do, uh, I think it's Dizzy. Let's do Dizzy. Here. There we go. And you can see here's a, a different language. Now, what's really neat about this is it's a development de environment on the Mega 65. But check this out. You know, normally where if you're in basic, you would have to list and list certain lines. This actually scrolls. So it's a modern development environment using um, some modern programming techniques. So you don't have any go-tos, go-sos, those types of things. It's got modern looping and uh, structure. So that is one tool that will come with the development or with the Mega 65 on the onboarding uh, SD card, which is really cool. Let's go ahead and I am going to reset the computer now. Okay, so there's our onboarding and let's go back to another game here. Uh, still has an older language flavor for sure. It does, but there are uh, check Shallon's uh, live stream. Uh, I would also recommend that you check out uh, the Mega 65 stream and Paul's live streams on Twitch, it, where they are both programming in modern languages. Uh, not to hijack the topic, but have you checked out? Oh, the uh, uh, Color Max Might 2. It's great. Yes, I've seen that. That's the. Uh, I think that's an FPGA based as well. Uh, and it has a, uh, I think its big claim to fame is the basic that's included with that. I actually have seen some videos on YouTube about that, but I do think that the Mega 65 with its enhanced basic, and I'm going to show you a basic game here in just a minute, especially with its uh, use of uh, sprites in basic is so much better in the Mega 65 version than it was in the Commodore. You can actually access sprites without machine code and all those types of things, so it's pretty cool. Um, let's see... Uh, 11 is still a version of basic 2 RC. So you, are you familiar with that, Michael? Uh, I was not before the Mega 65. I had not heard about 11. So I'm glad we have somebody out there who kind of knows what that is. Now, I do want to uh, go into Lunar Taxi. And I'm going to go into Lunar Taxi 2 just because it's a little updated. You all will be very familiar with this. Uh, I have played this several times. Your mission is to land on the highlighted pads. So here we go. Now, here's that situation where I push and it's not working, so that means I would have to normally physically swap my joystick, but let's do that in the freezer. Let's go ahead and swap that joystick back to say yes, and let's go ahead and resume. Make sure I hit the right things here. Hit enter, and there we go. And then this is what you're pretty familiar with, where you got to land on the pad, but not too hard and score. And then you've got to fly over to the other one, which is a little bit harder. And then we'll land that one. It's, it's actually kind of fun. You can tell it's it's not very smooth. I think, I, I can't remember if this one's written in basic or not. We'll have to go back and check. We can check that here in just a minute. But uh, after you play a while, you get pretty good at it. I'm not sure what my max is. There we go. Let's go ahead and pull that one over. And boom. You know, you've got just a certain amount of time to get there. And this is where I really love this Atari or this Hyperkin joystick. I got to tell you, I love this joystick. It is perfect for this type of game. Boom. And we'll do one more. 
trust me, it's, it's actually I've played this I've played this a few times. That's why uh, I'm able to go pretty quickly through. I've been playing it because I really enjoy. I don't know why. So I like that Flappy Birds thing. You just kind of enjoy playing this. Uh, speaking of a Flappy Birds type of game, there is another one that's going to be very similar that you'll see here in a minute. That's pretty cool. There we go. Lost many hours playing this Lunar Taxi. I know. Uh, <laughs> it's time for some Lunar Money. Oh, that's good. Okay, so that is Lunar Taxi. Do. Too. So that's uh, that one, which I think is a lot of fun. So now what we're going to do is I'll go back and reset here. I should have frozen the state, which I'll show you what I mean by that uh, when we get back in here. So again, we've already uh, created our Mega 65 box right here. If you uh, missed that, boy, what a lot of fun that was watching me cut paper and fold. Let me tell you what, that was so exciting. All the games I had planned to share were on this SD card. So this is just perfect. I do want to show you, uh, oh, we were going to check and see if Lunar Taxi was in basic. Let me do that real quick. I don't know if I can exit out of that or not. Yeah, I cannot. So I'm assuming that is machine language. I don't think I can get it into that. So um, I do know there is one, though. There we go. And we'll go here and we'll go to the game. And I am going to show you one that was developed by a uh, developer in the Mega 65. And I always mess his name up. I believe it's Gersay. Uh, and I'm going to go to K. And he's been nice enough to help me on many things. So this one is written in basic. Now, he did this as a, a, a pure pet ski game written in basic 65 as a demonstration of what's possible. So we'll go ahead and take a look at it. You gotta love the name. Uh, help Poopy win the affection of Mega Cat. Mega Cat is the uh, official what's what mascot? There we go. The mascot for the Mega 65. Collect hearts and avoid vicious a Mega Puppy. Control Poopy with cursor keys. So we get to put this down, and we're gonna press any key to kit begin. And then you you have to move and you have to capture not those, but you want the hearts. Oh go! Oh. And it, it gets a little difficult here. There, oh. And I've got a little latency here for some reason that I've not had. Hold on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this up, and I'm well. I'm running at uh, 40 megahertz. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, oops. Let me go back here. I'm gonna take that down to just the regular three and a half, which is the standard. Which you can also do in the freezer. You can change that. And let's go ahead and resume that and see if that fixes it. Uh, it's still got a lot of latency, so I'm gonna reset. Hold on. And uh, you can see how fast I can do this, which is nice. And let me go ahead and make sure this is back on. Okay, we're back on 40. We are going to do that, but we are going to go back into 2. We're going to go back into K. We're going to hit Enter. Let's see if that fixes it. And we're going to press any key. Yeah, it's interesting. I've, I've got some... I've not had, I did not have this earlier. I'm going to figure out what's going on, but I'm hitting the cursor keys and I've got just a little bit of lag and I, it's not my capture card either which is kind of interesting yeah those are some dropping droppings man those are some big ones uh, yeah uh, okay I'm kind of getting them so that's that's got too much late I've got to figure out what's going on I've used that on the Nexus uh, FPGA board and everything was fine so I have to find out what's going on there could be something with that I've messed up but I don't think so but here's what I want you to see if I can exit out of this this is a basic program it's running so fast that uh, even in slow mode, so let me go ahead and I'm going to take this down to one megahertz. We're going to resume that and then I'm going to list it. But now you can see the actual basic program that was used to create that. And again, it's using some of the new Mega 65 commands um, that are included in the new updated basic. And we'll do one more that I want to show you here. And then we're going to go into C64 mode, which has some enhanced modes. It's really cool. Uh, and I want to show you some of the, the titles that are going to come with the 
uh, onboarding SD card for that as well. Uh, why are you playing as Colonel Sanders? Uh, you know, that's a very good question as well, Mark. I'm not sure why the character. We'll have to ask Gerseg and see what he says. And uh, I do want to show you this. I love this game. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, it is uh, Wave Hero. But this one just, this is, this is the Flappy Birds for uh, this platform for me. So what you do is it's very simple. You're using one control, the fire button. Watch this. I'm horrible. Here's what I found. I'm horrible, horrible at this, but it is a lot of fun. Okay, now I've got to swap my joystick, so let me do that. It does require, I wish people would pick a joystick port and stay there, don't you? Uh, let me go ahead and resume here. And here we go. And so what you got to do is wait for this. You got to get high enough and then you got to jump over that. Hey, I, got, I made one. And then you got to do it again and you just see how many of those you can do. I'm actually doing pretty well today. I think that's probably the most I've ever done at one time. Ooh, oh, oh, this one's going to be tough. Oh, made it. Oh, and it sped up and you can see I just boom right under. You can waste a lot of time with this game. This is this really just has that flappy birds appeal to it. It's got great sound. Yeah, sometimes you just want to crash them and see what happens, uh, which is a lot of fun. But I also like it's got a lot of randomness to it. Uh, each game is different. It's not the same. So you can't memorize what's coming. There is a randomness to these little reefs that you're jumping. I think I've got that one. Oh, I think I missed it. Oh, I made it. And this one's a tall one, and boom, missed it. So that's a fun one. That's what, probably one of my favorites. Got a sip of eggnog there. All right, you guys ready to check out some C64 mode stuff? This is really kind of cool. So first I'm going to show you how you can get there by resetting here. And let me tell you, this has come a long way. I got the uh, dev kit, oh, what, about a year ago? I got uh, this dev kit and put it, it's probably been more than that now. Uh, but the development uh, was so much fun to watch the software get developed. But to show you what I'm doing is I'm hitting the restore key here, holding it, and that is bringing up my freezer menu that you see here. Uh, and that's how you do it. And so if we go into utility, I think it is for, if I uh, go to number one, it says go to C64 mode and I hit enter and that's going to load up C64 mode. So that's one way you can do it. The other way you can do it is you can hold your mega key, which is this one right here when you boot and it will boot into Commodore 64 mode. That's another way. The other way you can get to Commodore 64 mode is, and I can type go 64 like that, or I can type it with a space either way, and that will get you there as well. So the other way you can do it is one of the things about the freezer that I just love is the freezer menu is there for a reason. It freezes states, and I have a couple of states saved. For instance, I have this state saved right here in freezer slot number one that is for uh, device uh, internal drive is going to load a C64 specific .d81 file. So I have that selected. I'm going to load that. Now what I've also done though, you'll notice that I have uh, up here, here, yeah, I have load uh, the directory. So it's already loaded. So if I list, there it is. It's already in there. I, I won't have to keep typing in that command over and over. So to show you what I mean, if I go here, let me exit out of this. If I say go 64, right, and say yes, and I do a load, uh, 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 there we go, got it. So that was a list. That is a disk one, so that was the community disk one. But if I go to my freezer now, I, can, I don't have to worry about all this, I go back to my freezer, I go back into slot one, I load that, and now this is the other uh, .d81 that includes all the Commodore 64 files, which is really kind of cool. Uh, I have not done anything with this except load it. So let's see what we find on here. And first of all, I'm going to slow this down to 3.5 because we're not going to be able to watch this. Frequency, there we go, and resume. And uh, I'm going to show you this one sound. This, this is not a game, but this is kind of interesting. Let's do this. All of you probably remember the old Airwolf television series. There you go. There you go. So this is the music from Airwolf. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back into the freezer. Uh, C64 mode with, again, the directory already loaded. 
oops, the directory. I'm on the wrong computer, aren't I? So this is really kind of cool. Let me show you this one. I remember this one from the original onboarding SD card that came with the dev kit. Actually, I don't even think I need to do that anymore. Yeah. Uh, for, for the uh, C64 mode on the Mega, you do not need to go and uh, get rid of the PRG like you used to back in the day. So let's go ahead and run this. And this is all Petski. This is a Petski-based game. Let me just make sure I've got some noise here. There we go. And boom. And this is a fun game, too. And again, it's pretty cool because Petski... And I just opened something. I'm not sure what's in there. Oh, oh, oh. Let me take a look at, uh, I'm curious about dream cars. Okay, I will. Let's go check out dream cars. And dream cars, there it is. Oh, I think uh, that's, a, that's a great, it's a great one to, to check on. Um, to ask about. Let's see. Yeah, this one's interesting because it has that 32K um, memory on there, which is maybe the reason you asked. Yes, it's e uh, Michael says, that, yes, it's FPGA, not emulation, but C64 mode is C65 style, so not a different core, just a differently initialized Mega 65. Yeah, there's actually a Mega, I'm sorry, there's actually a Commodore 64 core, I believe, in development, and someone I think, or I have heard, rumored, is working on a Commodore 128 as well, which with this keyboard would be amazing. That would actually be fun. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this, see what we get. I forgot which speed I was, I was in. This is Dream Cars. I think I need another joystick. Uh, so hang on, let me grab, if I remember this, I think, yes, I need two joysticks. So hang on just a second. My Competition Pro, here we go. The, the, the clicky soundy one, that one, yeah, there we go. All right, let me plug this in. And I think this is a two player game, Mark, which is why, yeah, it's, it's a two player game. That's why you need two joysticks. Uh, so let me go and plug it in. I love it, there we go. Uh, okay, so now we got two joysticks. I don't think I use two joysticks. You, Mark, if you were here, you would take one joystick. I would take the other and I think that's how it works. Okay, let's go ahead. And, we're going to give this a shot. So here's here's the situation I have right here. Got our two joysticks. And I am going to push one. One. Uh, enter your name. I think that's good. Oh, there you go. We can we can choose that one. Oh, how about a VW Beetle? That works. And then what's this one? This one is, let's just use that name. And a, there we go. We got, oh, there we go. Uh, Three laps. Uh, okay, let's see what happens. I have never seen this game, so this is going to be cool. Press any fire button to start. This looks kind of fun. Let's see what we have here. We are, we are, we are driving. Let's see. Oh, oh, this is cool. On your mark. Okay, now since I'm playing by myself. Oh, goodness, great. Oh my goodness, this is too fast. I, I can't control. Hold on. We can't do this. We cannot play this game at 40 megahertz. Let me slow this guy down here. Whew. Okay, let's see if that. There we go. That's that's. A, although I am I am horrible. Um, wow. So you can see there. So that's kind of cool. It's split screen, right? So then this guy right here. Uh, remind me what game this looks like uh, from the 80s. Oh gosh, whatever it is, I was horrible at it. Uh, there we go. Well, it appears you cannot crash into each other. How about that? Uh, Mark says, uh, it'd be fun to make a single player game that uses two sticks for a dual shooter joist. Oh yeah, like Robotron would be cool. That is a great idea, Mark. I love that. So this is, uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, you asked for this one. I was kind of curious about this one when I first saw it. So let's go ahead and uh, again, I'm gonna bring back the freezer. Show you just a few things in the 
freezer menu while I have you. Again, you see across the top, you see resume, reset, and you can see me looking up. I got a big screen here with it. Uh, save to slot is how you would save a state. So I could actually save a game, and I've got 255 different states. So I could have like Geos in a state and have it so it immediately loads. I don't have to load it. It's just a save state, and I could go right back in and have maybe the document I'm working all saved in that state, which I just love that. You see CPU mode. We can go auto, uh, or we can choose a CPU. We have different ROMs that we're going to be able to select from our SD card later. Uh, and you can see here we have some ROMs. I am not going to change that, so we're going to hit escape. Uh, we can also change our CPU frequency, which you've seen me do quite a bit through this. This is, this is really uh, the important secret sauce that you need. You saw me use the joystick, which is really handy. I love that. You can also, uh, something I've not done, if I turn off CRT mode, uh, what it does is it turns off the scan line. So if you just want pure uh, graphics, pure pixels, you can do that and then you can get rid of those scan lines. But, you know, for some of us who are purists and have LCDs, we like to have those CRT scan lines enabled because some programmers took advantage of that in the design of their graphics. We also have video, which is PAL or NTSC. I would recommend when you get your Mega 65, or if you have a dev kit, or if you're using the Nexus uh, 4, uh, which I'd recommend you try that project until your, your uh, dev kit arrives, you might want to do that, then uh, make sure your video mode is in PAL 50 because that's what the majority of the titles. I had some issues early on where things were, and I couldn't figure it out, and then, oh yes, it's got to be in PAL. Uh, a lot of stuff is in PAL. You also have the monitor, that is your machine monitor which is really great and is probably a way I could have broken into that one program and taken a look at it. Uh, so let me get out of here and exit and back into here. You also have uh, audio and volume, so we can manage our audio and volume right out of the freezer. If you want to change that, you want to swap your left and right, so you can do that, which is really kind of cool. Uh, there's also a test sound. You want to hear that? All right. You can prove how old you are if you know what that's from. Uh, let's go back here. And then finally, there is a sprite editor that is here where you can go and build your sprites, export them, and use them in your own basic program. So the freezer has quite a bit. There's also going to be uh, some additional features in the freezer coming as we continue to see development. And so that's the freezer menu. Time, we'll do one more thing and then we'll call it a day for Christmas Eve. I really appreciate all of you joining me. Miss Lob, you win the prize. There is no prize other than Merry Christmas, sir. And let's see, let's go back in and load that one. And we will do something from the second page. I was looking for something holiday. I don't see anything. I probably, if I had prepared, I should have found something holiday for you all. Uh, like a Christmas tree or something like that. Let's see what Star Riders is. That sounds kind of cool. All right, let's see, Compose. this may just be a demo. Let's see, Ian, am I, uh, it's a demo disc of some kind. Oh, look at this. Hey, this might be a way to have some fun. Let's see what we have. So there doesn't appear to be any controls for it, but that's kind of cool. I think we're starting, that starts to give you some, uh, an example of some of the power and capability of, okay, I'm sorry, we're gonna do one more. I am just fixing it. Yeah, that's the problem. I get stuck on these things. I start uh, going into these titles and I just wanna see more, so. Let's go back to our freezer slot again. Let's load that. Let's get one from the very bottom of the page. Oh, this looks, what's, what do you think, Gubba? Gosh, I'm, I'm curious as to so many, what's conservative, what's Gubba, oh, well, nah, I don't know. You know what, I'm gonna just, uh, I'm gonna be going a little bit later than I had planned. Don't tell my wife, Mrs. Claus, uh, but let's run. I think most of these are demos. Oh, wow. I like that. <laughs> 2020. So this, uh, this is a C64 from the demo scene, it looks like. Hey, Mark, tell me if you can hear that. <laughs> she is, man. She is. Uh, she's going to come down here in a minute because I need to be helping her pack. Uh, so uh, thanks for keeping me straight. But I told her, I told her 45 minutes to an hour. So I've still got, I've still got four, four minutes. So four minutes. Let's get out of here. That looked like a lot of fun. I'd like to take a look at that. Let's do one more here. Uh, let's load. There was something at the very bottom that looked intriguing for me. Uh, where was it? Uh, 
I am just curious to what this is. Petsky Trip. I love how fast the software loads, that is for sure. I mean, it's so much more enjoyable playing these things than it would be on a real C64 uh, with a floppy drive for sure, right? Or, oh, look at this. Hey, this, is the, this, this seems like the perfect thing to end on because we've got a Commodore car, we've got the Petsky uh, logo. Let's start with a little story, a little story for our Christmas Eve. So as we're going through the story here, uh, Miss Mislav can hear it good. I, I do want to thank all of you that joined me. Uh, I really want to thank the Mega 65 development team when I told them that I was going to do a little live stream. Uh, and I don't have a, a bunch of a huge group of followers, uh, but they were nice enough to make sure that they told me about this. Make sure that we had the little box so we can do that. Uh, don't forget you can download yours at the files host. Uh, I'll have a link in this when I put it live. I'm probably going to do an edit of this and put it online. But uh, definitely go grab that if you want to do it. But they were also nice enough to, again, tell me where I could find the onboarding SD card so that we could play around with that and see what it would have kind of been like if we'd had our Mega 65s under our tree. And thankfully, you know, I had the dev kit. So we were doing a really pure hardware. I mean, this is as close to a Commodore or a Mega 65 as you can get because this is the hardware, the developer's kit hardware that uh, they had 100 of them. By the way, I have a number... 261 is the number I had. So I'm really fortunate that I had this and it's just been a blast this past year watching the development, going through the pain and pinch points because there have been some pain and pinch points. Uh, you get a core, you load it, it wouldn't work. That would be interesting. And then you provide feedback. And I was happy to do that and had fun doing that. And you know, it's not a computer that you're using every day to get work done. So you don't worry about it. You just say, hey, we got a problem. It's not working. I had a problem with uh, audio this morning and it turned out to be on my end, not theirs. And sometimes I feel bad about that. Like I'm, I'm, I've just bothered you. and It was really my fault, not yours. So, hey, Mark, thanks so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, stay amazing to you, sir, and I really appreciate the super chat. Thanks so much. Uh, Merry Christmas to you, Mark. Uh, you have uh, been through uh, a few of my live streams with me, and I really appreciate you being out there. But again, uh, super, super cool that you did that. I really appreciate it. I am going to go ahead and end this now. Let's see. Let's go back to our story and see where we are. Um, but uh, I will be doing some other videos. I actually have the next two weeks off. And uh, one of the things I'm going to be doing is getting caught up on some video work that I want to do. And I think I have another live stream probably uh, in a week or so that I'll probably be doing. So if you have anything uh, you'd like to share uh, about this process, how I could make this better, please do that. Hopefully this will help you get excited about the Mega 65 because I am super excited about it. It just gets better. I will tell you that the wait will be worth it because... They've got an extra three months or so to refine some things. And so it's just going to be even be a better experience. So again, thank you so much. Enjoy it. Enjoy your family Christmas time. Merry Christmas to everybody. And uh, Happy New Year if I don't see you before. Thanks for joining. Go out there and get some eggnog, folks. You know you want some. You know you want some in your Commodore 64 mug. I don't think Michael could have said it any better. Oh, not that one. <laughs> Oh, no, that's the one I wanted. I'm sorry, Michael. Yep, thanks for the stream, and Merry Christmas. And Miss Lot has a great chat, too. Uh, he says, enjoy your free time, and happy, merry, and blessed holidays to all. So that is awesome as well.